Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. The paper one GCSE exam for maths is on Tuesday the 21st. I've got it written down right here. Um, and it's a non-calculator paper. There isn't really a def definite list of topics that you can say will come up in the non-calculator or won't come up in the calculator or vice versa. You can kind of predict the sort of topics that would most likely be on a calculator because you need to use a calculator, um, like trigonometry for example, or those that may come up on a non-calculator like estimation where you don't actually need to have a calculator at all. What I've actually done is I've looked at an examiner report from last year. Examiner reports are the reports that the examiners have written. So for example the Edexcel examiners or the AQA examiners, they write a report at the end of every single exam. So every exam in every subject and every paper specifically um, and a report is written and what it says is it breaks down the overall achievements of students so it says overall this cohort of year 11s in the whole of the UK did really well on question number one overall most students did really badly on question number two and it really breaks it down it also gives quite nice kind of general information as well and you can sort of predict the topics that may come up this year based on what students struggled on last year. Hopefully this will help you with revising with the next for the next two days um, and just picking on those topics that you know students struggled with last year and may come up this year. So I'm going to start off by talking about the general tips, so the general mathematical tips um, that were written in the examiner reports and then I'm going to go on to talk about the topics that students struggled with and give you a quick recap for each of those topics. So the first thing that the examiner said was that students need to show all of their working out and a lot of marks were lost from students not showing their working out, especially on a non-calculated paper where everything comes down to really what you're showing. So it's really important to, if you see a question, show your working out, even if you think it's not important or I can do that in my head, show everything that you are doing. The second point was that students need to give reasons for their answers. So especially when it comes to um, looking at angles, so straight line, uh, parallel line angles, um, circle theorem, any questions where you're asked to prove or show um, or explain why this is right or prove that this angle is is the same as that angle, you really need to write coherent sentences that actually do support. So that angle is the same as that angle because it is they are alternate. That angle is different to that one because they are co-interior co and they add up to 180. You need to give your reasons why. And I think again, loads of students lost marks last year because they weren't giving reasons why, even though they got the answer right but they didn't give the reason and that is part of the mark so you don't get the full marks if you don't give your reasons. The third point that examiner said was relating to proof questions. Now these proof questions are kind of new, a new style of questions that have come up in the new curriculum and I think proof questions are quite interesting because students have been given the answer, so the actual answer has been given to you. But what you do need to do is act like you haven't seen the answer and do the working out and show what you would do to work that question out and then show that the answer is the same as the answer that you that you should have expected to get and then at the end of it say therefore this shows that my answer is 440 which is the same as the answer that was in the question. The fourth point that the examiner said was that there were quite a few papers where they just couldn't understand and they couldn't read the work um, and what they tend to find was students were doing some working out, realising that that was incorrect and then doing some more working out but then leaving everything there so the examiners don't know which bit to mark especially if they contradict each other, they don't know which bit to mark and so loads of students got zero marks because the examiners didn't know what to mark. If you do want to scribble out your work and if you do want to you know, start afresh, go for it but just make sure that you cross out the work very clearly that you don't want marked and you maybe circle the bit that you want marked and even leave a little note saying this is the bit that I want to be marked um, just so the examiners know because if they don't know that is zero, even if your working out is correct on one of them. So be very clear, don't just leave two answers and hope that they pick the right one. They won't do that, they'll give you zero. The last general point that the examiners made was about legibility. So the fact that they couldn't read a lot of numbers. So the number one and the number seven was frequently confused. So if people were writing like that for one instead of 
just writing a one um, and then they were and they were confusing it with the number seven uh, and also four and nine I tend to see a lot of students do this for four instead of doing it like you know quite sharp for four and that looks very similar to nine and that's one thing to check when you finish your exam paper you should not be sitting there with an, a closed exam what you should do is open the exam up and just go through the questions again make sure that your answers are able to be read make sure that your answers are clear make sure your sentences make sense your 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 letters and your numbers are legible those are the kind of things that you should be doing um, when you finish the exam you should not be sitting there doing that okay so moving on to the topics so like I said before these were topics that the examiner said that students last year um, found difficult and I'm combining higher and foundation I know that higher and foundation are quite different I looked at both of the reports and I found the topics that were kind of combined in them uh, a few of them are higher only though so I'll leave the specific details in the description bar down below so please go and look at that if you want to see exactly which ones uh, were which so the first topic is arithmetic and in particular division so long division on a non calculator paper was something that higher and foundation students struggled with quite significantly last year and they mentioned that this was a problem the year before as well so it's possible that you may get the first question or the you know one of the first early questions as a long division question or maybe a worded question that requires you to divide so make sure that you know how to do long division you can do the bus stop method you can do the column method you can do whatever you like but do make sure that you're able to divide and now a very quick and easy way to be able to do this is just write down two random numbers, divide them, and then just check on your calculator whether you've got that right or wrong. You don't need a textbook or you don't need past paper questions to be able to do this. You can just check to make sure that you're able to divide with long division. And this should be a nice and quick activity. The next topic is rounding, in particular, to significant figures. So rounding, you can round to significant figures, you can round to decimal places, or you can round to the nearest 10, 100, 1000, etc. But in particular, the one that the examiners mentioned was significant figures. Now, if you have a question that says to round your answer to two significant figures, if you don't do that, you lose that final mark because you haven't rounded it to two significant figures. If you're rounding 256 to two significant figures, that's going to be 260 because the five is going to round up because of the six, so it's going to be 260. The next topic that both higher and foundation struggled with was dividing fractions. All you have to do is take the second fraction, so you've got two fractions, take the second fraction and flip it and then you change the sign to a multiply and then all you have to do is multiply across. So if you were dividing two fifths by six eighths, all you would do is do two fifths times eight over six and then you'd multiply across. So that is all you need to do. The next topic is unit conversions. So just converting between different units. So meters, millimeters, centimeters, um, cubic, uh, units as well just make sure that you're able to convert you cannot do Pythagoras if one length is centimeter and one length is meters it needs to be the same unit for you to be able to work anything out so do double check to make sure the units that you're using are the same before you go on to do any calculations and in fact when you convert the units that is a mark so if you show that you've converted three meters to centimeters um, and you just show that working out and you do nothing else, that would give you a mark. So the next topic is Venn diagrams, in particular the difference between union and intersection. Union is a U, it's the U, and then intersection is the N. Union is everything, so if, if we are in unison, that means we are together, so it's everything inside, the. whereas intersection is the bit in between, the overlapping bit, it's what intersects. When you have an intersecting road, it's the bit where the roads meet. So where do those two groups meet? It's a bit in the middle and that's going to be your intersection. Then you're able to identify that it's just the middle bit. And remember that the probability is going to be out of everything. So it will be everything that's within the box, the data sets. The next topic that students struggled with, both high and foundation, is estimation. A, a very typical question that you might get on non-calculated paper is, a, quite a complicated bit of writing and then it says estimate the answer for whatever now to estimate the answer you do not need to use the actual values that have been given to you what you do need to do is round them appropriately so for example if you were given the number 270 you could round that to 300 if you were given a number like 1.56 you could round that to 2 
Um, so just round to the nearest whole number or to the nearest hundred or the nearest ten. Okay, so the next topic is expanding brackets, but in particular when there are negatives. So it could have a negative sign in front of both brackets, it could have a negative sign in front of the number or within the bracket itself. So just negatives in general, I find that students really struggle with and examiners have also made it very clear that students struggle with that. Don't forget that two negatives multiplied give you a positive. Don't forget that a negative and a positive multiplied give you a negative. Although it doesn't say this in the examiner report, I would also practice factorizing with negative numbers as well. If you are foundation, then practice factorizing when the coefficient of x squared is one. If you are higher, then practice factorizing when the coefficient of x squared is is more than one to be able to solve when you are factorizing using the AC method. Next topic that came up is drawing linear graphs. So y is equal to mx plus c. You're probably used to seeing that y is equal to mx plus c, but sometimes they do change it up a little bit. So they might put the c next to the y, they might put the c, so it might be y plus mx instead of y is equal to mx plus c. And uh, don't get confused, rearrange it to make it look like what you're used to and then you can deal with it. Gradient is in front of the x, it's the coefficient of x is the gradient, um, and if it's negative, that means that the graph is going down, if it's positive, that means the graph is going up, um, and then the y-intercept is that other number. So the other number will be the y-intercept, which means it's the point at which the line crosses the y-axis. So just be really careful with drawing straight line graphs. Moving on, Another topic that students struggled with is changing the subject of a formula. Again, this is a very good non-calculator paper question um, for both higher and foundation. You just probably have a, a slightly different one if it's higher, but you don't need to do any calculations. It's just rearranging. Move one thing and then move something else and then move something else. Identify what the new subject should be. Which, which what should your new subject be? What have they asked you to, to, to make the subject in the question? Circle it and then just move everything away from it one by one, step by step. Put your method very clearly. Don't skip any steps. Show every single method clearly. And remember that when you move any letter or number from one side of the equal sign to the other side, you're doing the inverse operation. So if you're moving plus three to the other side, it's gonna be minus three on the other side because it cancels it out from that side. And if you feel like you're a bit lost and you're a bit confused, cross it out like clearly cross it out and do it again. Another topic that students struggled with is deriving algebraic expressions. Three apples and two bananas cost five pound. Five bananas and three apples cost 10 pound. Um, how much does one banana cost? And to, what you need to do is make your own algebraic expression. So you need to say, okay, three B plus two C is equal to five pound 20, five B, and then you, then you solve it algebraically. Um, again, this would be a really nice non-calculator paper because there really isn't any hard calculations that you need to do, so I'd be very prepared for a simultaneous equation question on a non-calculated paper. Um, don't forget to make sure that you know both methods. The method of elimination, you cancel out a term, and the second method of substitution, where you put one of the equations into another one to cancel out one of the letters. This topic is graph, so very similar to what I've just mentioned, but more so looking at parallel and perpendicular lines. So if you are given an equation of a straight line, so a linear line, knowing the equation of a parallel line and knowing the equation of a perpendicular line. If you have a straight line, a perpendicular line would have a gradient of minus one over m, so it's, it's, it's the negative reciprocal, whereas a parallel line would have the same gradient. So if you have a gradient of two on this graph, then on the parallel line it would also be two because don't forget the gradient is exactly the same whereas a perpendicular where it's perpendicular it's going to be what minus one over m the next topic is simplifying ratios deal with them like uh, a fraction just divide everything by the same number so if you can simplify it by dividing everything by two go for it if you can divide it all by four go for it but simplifying it to as simple as you can so just make sure that you try to find the highest common factor between all of those numbers whether it's three numbers in the ratio, whether it's four. The next topic is surface area versus volume. Students really struggled with making sure that they didn't work out volume when they were asked for surface area. So surface area is the area of the whole surface. So if I have, I don't know, this book right now, my surface area, this side, but I've got times two, and then I've got this edge here, the spine, times two, and then I have this top bit, again, times two. So when you work out the area of this, when you work out the surface area of this shape, what you're really doing is you're working out one, two, and three, add them all up, the area of it, and then just times it by two to double it. 
okay? A triangular prism, it's slightly different because you've got the two triangles, so you'd work out one triangle area, times it by two, and then you've got the base, the side, and then the slanted side as well. So be very aware of surface area. Whereas for volume, I would just multiply my three dimensions. So it's looking at, volume is looking at how much space is inside um, that shape, the 3D shape, where a surface area is the area outside of the shape. And the last topic that students struggled with, both higher and foundation, and I can completely agree with this from my experience, is the sum of interior angles in polygons. N is the number of sides, so if you have a six-sided shape, your N is six. Calculate the sum of the interior angles of a 12-sided shape, all you have to do is 180 times 12 minus 10, so that's 180 times 10, uh, which is 1080. So all you need to do is remember that formula, 180 times N, which is the number of sides, take away 2. That's it. Make sure you know how many sides different shapes have, so make sure that you know uh, the names for everything from three-sided shapes, which is obviously a triangle, square, um, and then you need to know five-side, six-side, seven-side, eight-side, nine-side, and ten-side. So you should be able to know what they are, because if you don't, and you're asked for, and you're asked to work out the interior angles of a hexagon, and you don't know how many sides a hexagon has, then you won't be able to work. Okay, so that's the end of this video. I hope that helped you to kind of pinpoint a few topics. There is a website that I would recommend. It's called Maths Genie. I'll leave the link for it down below. It does break down um, the exam papers into subjects. So if, for example, you say to yourself, ah, oh, you know what, I really need to practice simultaneous equations and that's my weak point, um, but you don't know where to find questions from, go to that website and then search simultaneous equations and there'll be a whole paper on only simultaneous equations with the answers as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and if you like this video, don't forget to give me a huge thumbs up. Best of luck for your exam. I'll be doing a similar video for paper two, uh, calculator and also for paper three. So if you are interested in that, don't forget to subscribe to be notified when I next post and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.